Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 my dad. Walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube, Threads, you name it, we're on it. Just type Ball Stock Podcast one on one on anywhere. Google us. You'll find it. It'll pop up, I guarantee you. But if you want to see our visuals, you got to definitely hop over to our YouTube channel and don't only subscribe. We would love to have your membership because y'all always meet us on a daily basis and ask us exactly how can we support the brand. That's how you can support the brand, by a membership. How you do so under this interview, in the description section, or any interview under the description section, you'll see it says join membership here. Click that, and it take you on the way. Thank you very much for your support, and we love you. Man, we got a special guest in here today, y'all. He don't really need no introduction, man. This is second time on the show, man. Hey, man, this my guy, man. To be honest with you, I rock with him. I rock with everything he stand for. Um, I'm gonna be real with you. I've been batting and swinging ever since he left here. <laughs> I don't know, you know, people were coming for him, and I was like, man, I gotta get deep. One back on the show, man. D one, thank you for coming back, man. Yes, sir, man. Welcome thank you for back, me. man. Thank you, brother. I wouldn't go everywhere twice. You know, what <laughs> man? straight up, straight up, man. I just, I just know that. You family, we trying to make sure we treat you as such. You know, mm -hmm. you in Texas, man. You know, you be everywhere, though. Mm -hmm. I've been watching you, man. You don't just be in one place, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I've seen you, like, I'm watching your movement. Like, bro, do you ever get, like, dang, like a little tired? Uh, the tired part, uh, no, I don't, I don't get tired because everything I'm doing is, is purposeful, you know? And I know that there would be a day where I would no longer be able to do this. So... That's the time when I'm going to truly rest. But for right now, man, I got to make sure that while I'm in my prime, that I can use all of the energy and the creativity I got to make this world a better place. Man, I'm just trying to help people. And I got a large platform right now and a lot of eyes on me. So, you know, um, it's crucial that I do what I'm doing. Man, I, I just when I look at, you know, the, the, the just the the litany of things that I've seen in your movement, it's crazy because you came in this game, man, early on. You know, you wasn't holding no bars. You know what I mean? You was basically uh, standing for something. You mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of people that rap. There's a lot of people that get into this, but to actually stand for something and, and really, you know, um, understand from a young age, mm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That I'm really, you know, about something. You know, that was that was interesting to me about your story. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because a lot of people don't figure it out till later on. Right. They have to bump their head like, oh, man, uh, like Mace. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think Mace have a lot of great intentions. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. As far as um, his heart. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because mm -hmm. he, he got to a point where he just walked away from a lot of things. You know what I mean? You see that in Al Green, the, the singer. Mm -hmm. Like, these are things that... That, that you look at in, in, the, in the music industry, and I'm relating it because that's what you, your artist. So mm. when you think about certain ones, who it was uh, Daddy Yankee, right? Daddy Yankee. He just decided, and he did it in a big way. Hey, yep. man, I'm turning my life over to Christ. You yep. know, these are things that you don't just actually see happen all the time. Right, right. The shift is happening right now. Right now, the music industry is shifting. People are waking up. People are being like, whoa, I've been hypnotized for too long. I've been pushing people towards a path of destruction and I feel bad about that so people are waking up and fans are waking up and saying man what have I been consuming all this time I've been consuming murder music I've been filling my ears up with music that's just preaching death and destruction to me all the time and I'm like a zombie because they package it and make it sound good people are waking up man and I'm proud to be a part of that shift we shifting away from the toxic hip hop we shifting away from just the one narrative where it's like hey I'm just doing whatever I gotta do to feed my family like we shifting away from that and empowering artists and fans man you one of the newer guys when it come to it um, cause I remember, like I told you before, I say newer chance. The rapper was a con, you know, like they spoke and this is another one too. It's uh, uh common was one that mm. conscious, they mm -hmm. spoke with, with dignity and, mm -hmm. and, and they spoke with integrity when they, when they would rhyme, do they rhyme scheme. Right. Mm -hmm. it, I think it was one more too that I, I can't get, I can't think of the one played like he Lupe? was Will Smith. Lupe. Oh, oh you talking about Johnny Lucas. Yeah. Like he won too. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Speak like credible messengers you know mm -hmm. what I mean people mm -hmm. who send in a message out that pretty much touches one's heart and put it in a way to where it can structure one's life right right you right. see what I'm saying but yes, sir. but yours is kind of different 
Yours comes straight. It's a come at you style. Like yo, the way you rhyme, it, it's a direct hit. It mm. ain't. It ain't like it's coming straight for like this is my target and I know what I'm trying to target and hit. Correct. And Correct. that's the difference, I think. Yeah. I definitely want to I definitely want to strike a nerve with people to where when they hear it it's like man I feel convicted. I feel like this dude was speaking straight to my soul. It's not subliminal, it's direct. And it's not coming through in a hateful way, it's not coming through in a preachy way. It's just that reality, that reality sting. Yeah. And yeah. some people when they feel that sting, it make them change their ways and it make them say, "Man, I need to go ahead on and the words say in 1832, John, you should know the truth mm. and the truth will set you free. Mm. But it don't just set you free without stinging or making you miserable first. That, that's it. That's it. And the truth. There you go. So that's why I the I just come and make sure that I'm spitting truth and that I represent truth. And what I realize is that does not get welcomed with open arms by people who want to continue to live a lie. People who want to continue to consume lies or put lies out there, what's the opposite of a lie? The truth. So when I come, they look at it like it's threatening, you heard me? And when you can't attack the message, because the message is the truth, what do you attack? The messenger. Wow. I, I want to, it's a good time to bring the segue in about uh, Fat Joe. Mm. Fat Joe say 90, how much? 95%? 95%. Of everything I said in my raps was a lie. How big was that to hear Fat Joe? Say that that was powerful. I'm I'm so happy that Fat Joe had that moment to where he made that statement on national TV. He said 95 percent of what he has put in his raps have been lies. For fans to hear that, that's such a teachable moment to where you should just hear that and internalize that and be like, okay, I have to rethink my attachment to these raps now because if I'm patterning my lifestyle after what people are saying in these raps. And what if 95% of what I'm patterning my lifestyle after is a lie? Then that means I'm headed towards a cliff to, to, to head straight towards walking off a cliff for something that wasn't even real. Because hip-hop is a teaching tool. And we can't act like it's not, man. We can't act like it's just entertainment. Hip-hop is too deeply ingrained in our system and our bloodstream to act like it's just entertainment. What do you think about it? He's right. You agree? Because mm -hmm. when you think about just the way that you look at the rap and just the way that hip hop is, when it first came in, it came in and it wasn't, it was more, there was no cursing. Mm, right. I'm being real. <laughs> no, no, you didn't curse. You know, the closest we got to the, to the hardcore was, uh, 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 Eric B and Rakim. Mm. I came in the door. I said it before. before. I never let the mic. It was like that. My name is D Nice. Checking mm. out your suckers and it wasn't really no. I'm gonna blow your head off or I'm gonna get high. Which it wasn't like that. Right. When you you was talking to DMC, I seen yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. DMC them. It's tricky. The closest they got to something that was controversial to me was a dumb girl. Mm. I see you jacking JC because he got a Mercedes. You know what I mean? Like, it was not, that was, oh, you calling the girl dumb? Mm. Yep. The only thing that, that, that's all you had back then, it was not like people respected what they said in their rhyme schemes back then, bro. Yes. It was a different time. Yes, sir. Nowadays, one step at a time, people feel like, well, I got to take it further for more shock value. I got to take it further than the last rapper did for some more shock value. Next thing you know, we are in detail glorifying how we murder people. We are in detail glorifying how we disrespect these women and how we run through them and how we run trains on them and how we sell dope to our own community. We detailing it like that. That's a problem. And we call it entertainment. It was entertaining it's a about problem, that problem though, but you got to think like me being a dude that came from the other side that bumped my head. Mm -hmm. I listened to all that when I was coming up too. I didn't just I listened to Too Short when he came out. Mm -hmm. He was crazy with it. Luke was crazy with it. Mm -hmm. Am I proud of that place where I was at? At that time, I was a lost person, bro. There you go. I'm being real, but I but I enjoy it, and, and I still think. And when you put it in, just like you put in Al Green or something like that. I think about my moms. 
You know what I mean? I think about them because that's what they played when I was a kid. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So when I put in like a too short, it'll take me back to high school. Mm -hmm. I'm being real. Mentally, oh, yeah. it'll put me back there. Yeah. But it won't make me want to go back to that lifestyle either. So I have to be careful. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. But is it a thing, D1, where I do one become mature enough to digest that type of music? When you become mature enough to digest that type of music, the question becomes... Why would you choose to digest that type of music as opposed to other types of music? That's the real question. Wow. Just because you can do something, just because you can uh, take a whole bunch of pills and not kill yourself and you're like, damn, my body's strong enough to take all these pills, you know, that I shouldn't have took. Does that mean that you should? That's real. What'd you well, you talked about shock value earlier. And um, when I think about... In today's society, you know, they always say negati negativity is what sells. That's what everybody, because when I post something positive, I might get 200 views, 100 views. But if you post something crazy, negative, 10, 20, 50,000, sometimes you can post something positive with a message. It depends on who is coming from and you get good views. So... You know how you're talking about sometimes the way how you say things, like he was saying, the way how you say something always is positive and it is the truth. You have to deliver it in such a shocking way for people to grasp people's attention. Is mm. that what you're doing? Mm, that's a great question. No. Okay. Not at all. Okay. For me, putting the truth out there is something to where I do it with passion. I do it with intelligence. And however people receive it, that's how they receive it. Mm. You know, I've been teaching for a long time since before I was a rapper. So I know how to package something to where when you hear it, it's going to it's going it's going to hit you. It has to stick with you. If I'm a teacher, like right now I'm a college professor right. at Tufts University. Mm -hmm. If I'm putting all this knowledge out there, but I don't know I don't know how to package it to where my students can be like, ooh, Professor D one that that just that stuck with me. Then I'm not going to be an effective uh, professor at that exactly. point. Exactly. So it's just something that I know how to do. But you brought up a great point. Because I think y'all had uh, yeah. my brother Sean Cotton on right. this show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, for sure. I've never met Sean, never spoke to Sean, right? So mm -hmm. there's no bias when I say this. But I can tell Sean has a good heart. A great I, heart. I can tell he has a great heart. I can tell by listening to him speak. I can also tell that Sean thinks from the lens of a businessman about what is best for people's brand and what is best for what's going to get the most views. There are certain people, you think that God cares about what's going to be best for your brand? God cares about putting truth out there no matter what. Mm -hmm. God not going to be like, yo, all right, all that stuff that you were glorifying was excusable because that was your brand and you were eating off of it. That's the lens I think Sean wasn't thinking through when he came up here and made certain statements. And that's just what I, that's the lens I think through. You recognize that I was not going to be willing to compromise what I'm on and this message that I'm on, even if I didn't rise to the level I'm at as D1. I'm in a very blessed position for, and especially with the lane that I'm in, you know, I'm, I'm so blessed. I didn't have longevity, a lot of success. So some artists might try to act like, we don't know who D1 is. Who, who is this? He, he clout chasing, da, da, da. Yo, I don't speak on, on that. that. No, but, but the reality people, is, yeah. But what you're saying about Sean, about, about what, you know, you just said, I was like, if you're not at a place where spiritually you are there, you're not thinking about God every every word that comes out of your mouth, every action that you take. That's a great point. You're not thinking about it if you are not, if you have not been tried, tested, and approved. Because a lot of times we have to go through, be tried and tested before we really hold on tight to him all yes. the time. Yes, yes. So there you go. Oh, that is, that is beautifully brilliant what you just said. Because I am a man of God before mm -hmm. I'm an artist on the mic. Right. A lot of people are an artist on the mic before they are a man they or a woman of God. Mm -hmm. You're right. So you're not thinking about God as your foundation for everything that you say and do. We were talking about uh, uh, the brother Charleston White a little earlier. And I'm like, I can look and see that this brother has done community work. This brother says stuff that it's like, I agree with some of the stuff that he says. But I also hear him say, what does he say? That he doesn't believe in God or, or something like that. Or he don't believe in the Bible or, or he doesn't follow it. When you say stuff like that, it lets me know, ah, so you're not rooted in anything that's like your foundation. Mm -hmm. Because depending on what your foundation is, that's going to determine what your output is. And it's not always about what you do, it's about how you do it. So you could be doing a lot of good work, 
But if how you do it is in a way that is making people say, well, for every good thing you do, you're doing three negative things, right. you know, then they're not going to take the good things seriously. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I'm just really, really, really passionate about the fact that we need mental health services to be taking place in the lives of these artists in the industry, but also fans need to think about their mental health. Where are you at as a human being if you have become addicted to hearing music that's glorifying murder, glorifying the disrespect of women, glorifying popping your P-U-S-S-Y, and glorifying selling dope? Where are you at as, as, as a fan, as a consumer, you know? Because if the consumers were in a better place mentally, I think that they would say, I want an alternative to this. Like, why would I want to let alone hear this all day, but then expose my kids to it? But majority of people who listen to those songs, who are doing all of that, the ones that I know of, they're, they're always saying, oh, that's a club song. So these are the people who are going to club consistently every night, every week, and whatever. These are the songs that they want to hear in the club because they're trying to turn up. Mm. Um, positive songs and stuff like that, I guess it don't, they don't get that turn up from. Mm. Well, they can because they exist. I mean, they definitely exist. But you're right. You're right. It's, it's, it's people feeling like, yo, I got to get... I got to get my fix and my fix yeah. is being able to turn up and being in able to wild out right stuff. quick yeah, in the that's club. What, that's what I hear all the time. Right, right. So I see a lot of... Because uh, they talk about, what's that girl? Ski? That's uh, sexy, sexy Red. Sexy Red. Sexy Red. Sexy yeah, because the things that she talk wow. about in her music and as being a female, that's one thing a lot of, um, we talk about on the show because we always ask females and we have some other people who um, are here and she was like, well, she love it because every time she hear it, she want to turn up and stuff like that. But what message is it giving to the young girls? Right. Correct. You know what I mean? Correct. But they don't care. Right. Just because something feels good, doesn't doesn't it feel good to, to get that high that you get from doing drugs? Mm -hmm. Doesn't it feel good to get to, to, to snort some cocaine and be like, oh, like I got that. I got that rush. Anything that's of the devil is going to always feel good initially. Especially when you're getting, because Rolling Stones talked about her and being in, was it number yeah, one or number whatever, one. whatever with that song. Wow. So that's giving. Oh, they said that was a song yeah. of the year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's giving recognition to something that's. That, that, there you go. You see what I mean? There you go. So that's why, that's why it's a spiritual war in this industry right now. Because I just won. 2023 rap MVP as well mm -hmm. from Rolling Out magazine, right? So when you got Rolling Out that's willing to say, we see the music and the moves that this brother has made in 2023, we're going to crown him the 2023 rap MVP. And you get Rolling Stone, who's a bigger outlet. Exactly. That's like, well, we're going to crown Sexy Her. Red as having song of the year and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you think Rolling Stone cares about what is best for the black community? No. No. Of course not. That's not that's not what they're in business for. They are a company. They are a corporation. They just care about what's gonna, that what's going what's gonna generate the most revenue. Mm -hmm. That's it. So when people start to look at you as simply a cash cow for them, then they will exploit you all day long. It don't matter if you're making a fool out of yourself. If you uh, speaking negatively about your community, they're like, man, that's what people want. So now it's like, dang, who? Who's really the biggest problem? Is it the is it the corporations that just want to make money off of us by any means? Is it the fans that's like, well, I'm gonna say whatever I gotta say in order to get paid, or is it the or is it the fans? Wow, mm -hmm. is it the artists, the fans, no. or the corporations? I wanted to ask you about like I did see like when Jim Jones was in the sway thing happened. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you like. Do there be like like it was a thing where and, and my son that's his name this dude here I've been a fan of him that's your boy he said he knew you when yeah he, we know each other but the dude I always looked at him as when I asked you about the Jim Jones uh, mm -hmm. situation on Sway you went on Sway first mm -hmm. and when you went on Sway dope interview I watched that whole interview you know you always do a great job you know how to handle yourself you know what I mean but when Jim came on there. Do you ever feel like like he was talking about his cousins or his little nephews or somebody like like it could be a problem in the streets? You know what I mean? Like mm. and 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 the thing is this is a thing that you're not into like that's not the type of that's not even the type of energy you bring. You know what I mean? Correct. Like you're dealing with children, you're dealing with 
all type of different things to where you're trying to uplift the community. Churches, everything. Churches, mm-hmm. you hear you hear speaking on a church engagement now. Like I thought about that. I'm like, man, you at some point, even me going out, you know, dealing with different people. It's a you got to do this anyway. It's always you don't know everybody know you. You don't know them mm-hmm. type situation. Mm-hmm. Do you have a fear or how do you deal with that? Like. Uh, when, when it comes to controversy when somebody like a biggest Jim Jones speak up and say hey man you know one of my little cousins or somebody could pop out and pop off on him you know for mentioning my name right what does that put you at when it come down to it right there's no room for fear when you're doing God's work and you have to really self assess and say is that why I'm doing this is to serve God because if I'm doing this to serve myself, I can get myself into a whole bunch of stuff that I'm not prepared for. But when I recognize that, man, not only am I serving God, but God also has me ordained. God has my back. So anything that's going on uh, as a byproduct of what I'm doing, I'm recognizing and understanding that God is with me through it all. So with that being said, the last thing you want to do is start to do God's work, but then not have enough faith in God to know that he'll protect you and then to stop doing God's work. That looks bad at that point. That's real. So, and and when you, when you first, when you heard these statements and that whole situation happened, did anybody reach out to you? I know people know you. So did people reach out to try to make sure that that was an understand? I seen, and that's my boy, man. I hadn't met him like you, my, my son or whatever. I've listened to his stuff ever since he came around. Like far as the intellectual things he say, now do I challenge something? I challenge anything anybody say. So I don't, don't, don't ever get it twisted. I'm a man first and I'm a man that le- I love God just like you and I have a book that I go by. So I have to stand on the rules that I stand on. You know what I mean? But he spoke eloquently about the situation and the balance. I like the balance that he spoke on it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I just was like, did anybody reach out or did y'all ever come to a conclusion? Yeah, so one of the best, one of the best parts uh, about that whole situation was uh, one of my former students, my man Fred O'Bang, yeah. uh, you know, I used to break up uh, fights when he was in school, you know, and I used to try to keep him out of trouble. Yeah. And for us to be grown men now, for him to call me, and he played the role of like, hey, like I'm, I, I, I'm gonna be a mediator in this wow. situation, you know what I mean? Because wow. he knows, he knows Jim, okay. you know, and of course he knows me. I'm his big bro. I'm his teacher, you know. So he reached out to me, and that meant a lot because I'm like, wow, look at this dude who I taught when he was in middle school, who is now as a grown man, you know, uh, speaking positivity and yeah. speaking in a way that that is like. Like navigating the 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 tender waters, you know what I mean, that exists when it comes to like, whoa, I know both sides. That's so good. let me, you know what I mean. So that meant a lot to me when he did that. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people who know both of us, uh, yeah. reached out and they're like, no, this is two good dudes right here. You know, Jim Jones and D One. This is two good dudes right here that uh. We don't need to see this go left field, you know, um, because we know both of y'all. So a lot of people did reach out. And in terms of the conclusion from everything, um, I got some real good news uh, that I want to report. And um, and I guess I'll uh, I, out of respect for uh, for Jim and just for, you know, just for everything uh, moving forward. I'd, I'll, I'll wait until y'all see it, you know, rather than me um, speaking it. But just know I got good news to report rather than bad news. And that's the thing that I was mm-hmm. going to ask, too. Like, you guys openly have an issue, but then privately resolve it, and we don't know. Right, and right. I don't think that's good because we don't yeah. know where this whole situation is at. Yeah, because yeah, the last time you said that you were on a... Um uh, a group text yeah. where all y'all that. were talking that, but, yeah. um, but you said that they weren't responding back to you yeah well since then he and I have responded and okay, we, we've texted each other personally Perfect. I just thank God yeah. for, the, for, the, for the resolve and yeah. I, I think that should be as open as the issue was absolutely that that's that's real that's yeah. real and you know when, when it's behind closed doors conversations sometimes people be like oh I don't want people to know this or know my business but I don't see why it would be a problem to share that Hey, we've personally been in touch, and like it's good energy being exchanged. That's right. That way, yeah. That, I think that is important. It's for very people important to know that. because yeah. I, you you remember key element and key moments. Mister Servon is a partner of ours of the show, and he spoke up hard about that. Now, if he don't know, I don't know the whole situation. But if he don't know, that was a resolve. Right. He's saying, "Hey, man, D one ain't going. This I, my little brother, and right. I ain't playing about him." Right. They, 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 
this have to be something that some right. kind of way people know. You're right. People got to know this stuff. You're right. And that is, that is absolutely real. I, I'm, I'm very glad that you are saying that side of it because I'm waiting for uh, um, I'm waiting for it to be something to where uh, Jim and I both have the opportunity to show everyone uh, like what type of page we on now, which is which is uh, a good page, a yeah. really good page, yeah. actually. Um, and I'm waiting for us to because it's that much more powerful when it's me and my brother, you know, what I'm saying right here having that talk. You yeah. Know? yeah. So. I'm waiting on that and I can't rush anybody's uh, right. timeline or schedule, but I do agree that this is actually really, that, yo, this is really good that y'all saying this because it is important in hip hop to not have these cliffhangers to where the last thing that people holding on to was something real bad and real negative. Mm -hmm. Cause now they are like, man, I love you so much that I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. It's up when in real life behind the scenes, yo, it's good. We we texting now. You know what I'm saying. We didn't we didn't communicate it, and and it's it's all good energy. You know what I'm saying. Like it's all good. And, and people don't know that. And people don't know that. So you're right. People do need to know that. And I think I've had so many people in my ear. Man, I'm so glad we're talking about this. I've had so many people in my ear throughout all of this stuff that has been just, you know, people try to tell me, hey man. You shouldn't do this, or you should never say nobody's name, or you shouldn't speak on this, or da 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 da. And a lot of it is just noise. You know what I'm saying? A lot of it is noise. I'm like, bro, if it ain't in the word of God, and like that's the code I'm following. I'm not following other people's codes. So amidst me hearing a lot of noise, sometimes there's a lot of information that I have currently that I'm like, what's the best way to go about this? Being being um respectful of all parties involved. Yeah, but. You get to the point where you're like, that's the devil if if I have good news, you know what I'm saying? And if I'm like, nah, but I don't want to speak on this good news, mm -hmm. why would I not want to speak on good news? Yeah, yeah. And that's the reality. Like, like there's no... Uh, that, like I have no I have no bad news to report regarding me and Jim Jones. It ain't this cliffhanger where we ain't never directly spoke to one another or, or communicated, you know what I'm saying? Um we have directly Which is good. text one another at this point. And there was mutual love and respect shown. I so think that's great. And people people need to know that. People need to know right. that. That's real. So um I, I've always wondered because I know that, you know, kids are always online and stuff like that. So what did your kids at school have to say about the whole issue when the whole issue popped off? Everybody wanted to come to my office and, and sit down and talk. They're like, yo, we, we want to come in here and talk. And, you know, they a lot of people were like, yo, my respect level for you has just gone through, through the roof. roof. Yes, because I see that you aren't changing throughout any of these situations. Mm -hmm. You are standing boldly on what you believe in, but you're not getting in the pig's pen and losing your morals, your values, and your principles to to just be like, all right, it's a free fall. It's whatever, you know what I mean? It's up now. So when people see that you're firm enough on what you believe in to not back down, but that you are firm enough on what you believe in to not stray from the principles that you stand for, that that's what's called a teachable moment. Real so talk. that's how a lot, a lot of my students, a lot of the people around me, whether it's my college students, whether it's my audience online, they are learning through this. So that's mm -hmm. why I don't think it's a bad thing for these situations sometimes to play out publicly because if I got almost 600,000 Instagram followers right now, almost 500,000 Facebook followers, you know, 200,000 YouTube, like... What's the point of having all these quote unquote followers if I'm not giving them anything to follow? That's real. So I have to be able to not only give them, you know, dope bars in my music so they can listen to them and vibe out to, but what about when they have conflict in their own life and they gotta be like, dang, how do I handle something that I'm going through with a coworker or with a friend or, or with a with a person that just simply don't like me. How do I handle it? Hopefully they could be like, I saw D one situation play out publicly and I saw what it what it looked like to be a firm man of God and not have to back down on anything you believe in, but to also move with love, move with respect and move with class and dignity. Love is important. Mm -hmm. Um Meek Mills, uh he came forward. It was something that came through for him for us for rest, what was that about? They, uh, I believe he, he, that he came to tears on that. Yeah, I believe that uh, a bill got passed. A bill got passed. It in, sure was in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. 
And, and when you seen that and the reaction of it, were you happy with the results? Extremely happy yeah. for that brother. Extremely happy for Meek Mill and for, I, I don't think that Meek would have faked those emotions at all. You know what I'm saying? I know that that's coming from a real place and I'm proud of that brother and I'm praying that that type of moment could stick with him to know like, yo, this that same energy that I need to keep when I'm making music. I could still be raw. I could still be, you know, talking about the reality of my life and my situation. But I gotta know what it is I'm fighting for. I want, and and it's it's something because when you when you think about it, you know, those guys. I don't know their faith. Okay, that's that's something I thought about way before now. I'm talking. About, I don't know what they stand on. I don't know what they believe in. Mm. And that's important because now I know how to approach them. When you deal with the word of God, you know there's Pharisees, Sadducees, and you know that there are scribes. And you know that there are people who, uh, even in the Old Covenant, where they be the Hittites or the Jubasites or the Philistines, you know that these people are who they are. You have to identify with these people as a understanding what they believe in to understand how to deal with how ministering to, to them. Mm, mm. You understand where I'm coming mm -hmm. from? Yep. So it, each one of these people believe in something. Mm -hmm. Only way I know is I can tell the fruit by, by the, the I, can, right. I can tell by the, the tree by the fruits it bear. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the only way I know what type of fruits are you bearing and this is going to depict to me who you are. Mm. So now I know how to approach you. Mm. In the midst of it all I'm still dealing with spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. So I know that the person, because you know, like even in Mark chapter five, when he talks about legion, mm -hmm. legion was just the, the, the many demons that was dealing with the man. Mm -hmm. But the man, once the legions was told to go out of him and go into the swine, he was, fine. He was sitting there clothing in his right mind. Mm -hmm. and, and he still stood on, on business with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, dang, you know, I'm leaving. And he told him he couldn't go. He wanted to go with him. He said, no, nah, I want you to go back to the Decapolis, which was the 10 surrounding city. Mm -hmm. To tell everybody. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, and I'm saying that to say each situation is different, mm -hmm. but you have to do it in a spiritual way in order to be able to pull these people out of the fire. Right. Correct. Am I right? Correct. Correct. Now, when you think about people that's in the fire, we only think about one aspect. We thinking about the artists, right? But at this point, we have to think about the millions of fans that are in the fire as that's well. Real. Real. Because for a lot of these fans, we don't know where they stand spiritually. So for a lot of fans, these artists are their pastors. Mm. These artists are the closest thing that they get into constantly listening to somebody. They're spending money with these people. They're constantly allowing their words to feed them. So these fans are looking up to artists so much so that whether or not they say it, these artists are ministering to them. So my thing is, how do we free the minds and the hearts and the spirits of the fans? Oftentimes, yeah, oftentimes we don't think about that. See, there's two levels of oppressors in the game. There's the corporations, I like to call them the commissioners, and they are oppressing the artists. Mm -hmm. As artists, you know, they, they got us in slavery, straight up. So they're oppressing artists, and they're also oppressing fans, all right? But then you got artists who are oftentimes oppressing fans as well. Whenever you're in a powerful, dominant position and you got people that are clearly below you, that are, that are listening to you, looking up to you, and then whenever you take advantage of that and you're not fair and equitable and have any type of morality to, to how you're going about being a leader, that puts you in a position of an oppressor. So we got to think about it. There's two type of oppressors. There's the companies, the corporations, and then there's the, the artists that are also oppressing who? The fans. The fans are being double, double oppressed. Wow. I think, I, like I say, you... You different, man, because a lot of times people are looking at you and they're trying to understand what is D one's methodology when it comes down to how you deal with who you name. Mm -hmm. You you named Jay Z, you mm -hmm. named Lil Wayne, mm -hmm. you named uh, who else was on there? Fifty Cent. Fifty Cent. You named Meek Mills, mm -hmm. Rick Ross. Mm -hmm. You named uh, uh, Jim Jones or mm -hmm. whatnot. But how do you pick who you name it when you turn around and you do songs with the game? Mm -hmm. You do songs with uh, Big Crit. Mm -hmm. You do songs with Lupe. You do songs with uh, everybody that you yeah, did, did. Juvenile, Juvenile. Man Fresh, you, Killer yeah. Mike. How do you decipher? How do you pick? How do you cherry pick who you's going to do a music with and stand on the morals and the foundation that you represent? That's a great question. That's a wonderful question. 
when it comes to picking when it comes to picking people who I may have ever named uh, over the course of my career in terms of saying that, that, that they can do better and whatnot, um, it's always people who you can clearly see how gifted and how talented and how smart they are. Like, you can clearly see it. It's like, y'all brothers got buku skills and y'all got a whole bunch of intellect and you can see it on you. It's, it's dripping off of you, but you're choosing to use that intellect and those skills intentionally to glorify negativity. That's when it's like, ah, I'm only going to tell somebody they could do better if I clearly know that they can do better. Some people ain't capable of doing better yet because they haven't reached a point in their life. They haven't reached a point in their maturity to where they even know anything different. You know what I mean? But when you see that people are capable of evolving in every other aspect of their life, if I see that you, man, wait, what? You got a clothing store? For real? Wait, you got four clothing stores? Wait, you a, you a successful husband? You a successful father? You a man of God? You all that? But wait, when you get on the mic, that's the only time you start talking like you, you know, like you don't know nothing and, and like you ain't got no intellect and, and no morals about you. That's the only time you do that? Something, I know you could do better. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. That's all it is, brother. Okay. That, 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 that's where that comes from. And it, yeah. And, I, and the reason I ask you that is because people, you know, like I said, when you see the comments and you see the things that's being said on the stuff that I put out or that I see that you're in, and yeah. they say, or just in general, people say, well, D1, uh, he only do that. He's just cloud chasing. He ain't got no big enough song to even relate to these guys that he's talking about. Yeah. And, and you've heard that already, like, but you, but but then some of them hadn't, like I said, to me, didn't do the research properly. Bro, I, bro I've, I've been famous for too long, bro. Yeah. Like, 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 let's just be real. I've been famous. I've been successful. Uh, I've been uh, financially in a wonderful place for too long at this point to where any of that stuff means anything to me. We do live in a big world, you heard me? You got 8 billion people in this world. So, Buku people could know who I am and, and be fans of me and patronize what it is I do. And a lot of people still might be like, well, I don't know him. But that don't mean, just because you don't know, did you do any Googling? <laughs> did before, like any of y'all fans who trying to, but he clout chasing, they'll try to say three things. When they can't discredit the message because the message is the truth, they'll try to say one, rap music is just entertainment. It's just entertainment. Nobody taking it serious. They'll try to say that. Number two, they'll try to say, oh, he just clout chasing. Oh, he just a clout chaser. He trying to, yeah, he just trying to get on. He trying to become popular or well-known on the strength of other people. And number three, they'll try to bully you because they'll look at me and they'll be like, well, we looking at him and we listening to him. And he ain't talking like he about that trigger play. He ain't talking like he no thug, you heard me, that, that, that's about that life. So because of that, we're going to try to get aggressive with him and, and bully him. And I'm not talking about other artists when I say this. I'm talking about the fans. Fans. I'm talking about fans who who will who will be calling themselves acting on behalf of foot the, soldiers. There right. you go, foot soldiers. You heard me. They will try to do those three things, and all three of those things is just like that ain't gonna work on me. The clout chasing part. I'm laughing at whoever try to call me a clout chaser. Like I'm laughing at that. You know what I mean? I'm laughing at that. Let alone if it's somebody with a big platform. You know. Like a like a uh, what's my man name? Uh, Joe um Joe Button. Yeah, Joe Button. I seen it. I, I seen that. And when I seen it, and you and Joe Button, have you ever met Joe Button? No. So I, you never met. I him? was a fan of Joe Button's music, bro. When he when he was putting music out, I was I was one of the people that was putting my friends on, saying, "No, I know y'all don't like this dude, but listen, bro, listen to this, man. He he he's speaking some real stuff right Joe here. Joe Button is a better podcaster than a musician. <laughs> Can he ever be? I'm from the South. But Joe Budden uh, rubbed me wrong a little bit about the Migos. When mm. he, you know, when they were speaking and they couldn't understand him and he walked off on them. Mm. Um, I don't, these guys are, the South is being disrespected anyway. And I don't think you understand the the the, the magnitude of what's happening when it come down to just Southern artists. Mm. You understand? Ain't got much, it, it, you, you in that sauce too. 
I ain't think about yeah. that. Easy. I never thought about that. I'm just that. telling you. And you right. And with everything that's been playing out, Come on I'm now. the southern dude, you're and this is all East Coast. You this got is me. all exactly. So part I, of the I'm whole different. I'm a, you. This is what I do on Boss Talk anyway. So mm. I'm looking at the whole Mason Dixon line and all that, bro. Mm. Like I, it's different for me. Mm. I just know that when you talk in your dialect and the way that you from New Orleans. That, that adds something to who you are for them people, bro. Believe that. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I'm being yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. when it comes to Joe Button, I'm going to go back to him. I I, I never I love his podcasting. Mm -hmm. He's a hell of a podcaster when it comes down to understanding how to get into the issues and speak on what's going on and create his narrative. He's good at that. Mm -hmm. Way better than being a rapper for me. Mm -hmm. I'm just being real. <laughs> I don't know where you coming from. I'm not riding with that. I'm being real. <laughs> I never listened to pump, pump, pump it up. I heard it because it was a song they kept making you listen to on the radio. Right, right, right. But no, no, no. Uh, okay. I thought, I, no. How do you come up with that? Yeah. How do you say you, you love this music like that? You know you cap. I don't yeah, think. Yo, you think I'm capping, bro. <laughs> brother, no, you, you, you brother, doing this I for have, the camera. Brother, brother, there's, <laughs> brother, there's no part of me at this point that that's, that's concerned with trying to I'm just messing yeah, with you. Cap when it comes to I mean, that, when did yeah. you listen to Joe Button then? Let's get into it. Yeah, he had a he had a mixtape series called Mood Music. See, he really be listening to it. I mm, never yeah. I don't know this. Go yeah. ahead. And so, it was good for you. Yeah, it you was good for it. me. Yeah. He what had, was your favorite song? He had an album called Patty Room. I like that album too. Uh I think my favorite Joe Budden song is a song he has. Um uh I just want to follow you, Lee. I don't want the money. I don't want to. I've never heard this it's song in my life. It's bro. featuring Joel Ortiz. I've never heard wow. that song. It's a song where he's like talking to God without saying God's name, but he's saying, you know, follow my lead. Follow, follow my lead. Pre prescription bottles. I just want to follow my lead. Like, he's talking to God about everything he's going through in his life, and he's basically saying, I'm tired of. Being a being a slave to all of those things, and I just want to follow your lead. And Got I'm like, it. man, I, I could feel see that. why that would be your favorite song. There you go. Sure. So and you that, know he knows. He knows. There you go. I know he. <laughs> there you go, brother. I know he knows. I know he knows who God is, and I know that he he has said in his music before. He just want to follow God's lead. So therefore, um, my my without question, calling his name though in ooh. the song, how you sure it was God he was talking about? Don't be hitting me with all these hard you questions. You understand what you know, I mean? I, I ain't you never, gotta call him by his name. Dang, I ain't never not got an answer for something, but that is interesting. Wow. Because you don't wow. know. We assume and we turn things to benefit us yeah. in our thought process because we can't think of it any other way because that's who we serve. But how we know that that person is serving that he could be serving idols or mm. whoever. Mm. A lot of people believe in the sun and all kind of stuff, bro. I'm be honest with you. Don't you don't never know. You mm -hmm. don't know what they, what they're, who they're. You remember we talked about this last time you was on here mm -hmm. when people say, "I want to give honor and glory to God." Mm -hmm. You don't know, right? Which God? Yeah. Well, I, I do know that. Uh, that is just proof, though, the fact that I can name that. I know y'all was like deep cap and yeah, he ain't yeah, gonna have yeah. no song. I did say it. That's a real. I apologize. That's a real song. Yeah, you really. Uh, yeah, I'm, I couldn't. I don't you. know nothing but pump, pump, pump it up. <laughs> right. But I just right. Do, right. pump it up and it put it get it going, it going, it going. Go, go. that, that's all I know. See, I know the song. I only got I one know song <laughs> that I I know. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I, but definitely yeah. podcasting. I respect yeah. him. He the big dog. Uh, I respect what he doing for. As, you know, just the way he put all those people together in that room gotcha. and, and, you know, organize that, that takes yeah. something. And to come from where he come from, I remember his first show, mm -hmm. you know, where he went through some stuff. To get mm -hmm. to who he is now, mm -hmm. he went through some stuff. Mm -hmm. He made some great uh, entrepreneurial moves, it seems. Mm -hmm. And I think that's big. And where we're at now today, he got it on point. He probably one of the most popular people in that realm. Gotcha. Than, than you'll ever see. So do but you? St but you still can't play with God. I don't care no, how popular. No, 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 no. I, I definitely agree with that. I got a question. I don't um, want to leave Joe Button right but now. Keep now. going. Okay. Keep going. I, yeah. I was trying to because I really. So, we, so our we, introduction to each other, we've never met in never person, met. we've never spoken, but my introduction to him was him bringing me up on his podcast, okay. bringing, bringing me up as a topic of discussion, right, and instantly casting me off as, he didn't even know who I was, he was like, they was like, D1, they were like, who's D1? It was like, oh, apparently he's a podcaster from New Orleans or something like that, and he made these statements recently, da-da-da, and Instantly, he just cast me off as, oh, he's a clout chaser. You know what I mean? And that's one of the big three. People that either say 
He's a cloud chaser. Mm -hmm. They say rap is just entertainment, so don't take that stuff so serious that, that people are saying their lyrics, or they'll try to be on some bullying type stuff yeah. and be like, oh, Lil Man, like, who are you? So instantly, he, he did one of the big three, just try to cast me off as a cloud chaser. And that's where I was like, wow, bro. Really grew up, uh, you know, advocating for your music to other people. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that that's like that. And you a rapper. If anything, maybe do a little. All you got to do is a quick Google. I'm so Googleable, it's ridiculous. You heard me? <laughs> like, you could Google me and see all of what I'm doing. 11 albums out, done toured this country more than 10 times. I ain't even got enough fingers to count. All these collabs I done did. But instantly, no, no, no journalism being done. You know what I'm saying? On on a show where you're covering other people and just because you may not have heard of me instantly, oh, he just a clout chaser. Oh, you ain't got to call people's names out, da-da-da. But my issue is, brother, your whole show, the way that you remain relevant at this point, your whole show is based on topics where what's almost every one of your topics is talking about other celebrities. You're right. I seen where you put up where he apologizes a lot. <laughs> you put that up. Yeah. I see. It was a bunch of them. Yeah. Like, what made you go into the apologetic uh, uh, search, Google search? That's a great question, too. That's a great question because I am a busy man. I'm a college professor. I'm a full-time artist who's pushing his music, who's also putting new content out on social media constantly. I don't even be having time to deal with a lot of this stuff, you know? So I get around to something when I get to it. So somebody has sent me a clip where he was apologizing to my brother, Lupe Fiasco. That's my brother right there, you heard me? That's who gave me this watch that I wear. Wow. Everybody you know, always loved this watch. Yeah, like, oh my that's God. nice. I yeah, like it. Lupe gave me this when we were on tour together around the country, right? So... With that being said, they sent me a clip where he, in the same clip, he was apologizing to Lupe in the beginning of the clip, and then near the end of the clip, as soon as he finished apologizing to Lupe, he said, but that other nigga, oh, I ain't, uh, oh, he, oh, he's, he's cloud chasing. That other nigga, oh, he cloud chasing. Oh, that, 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 that Christian, oh, yeah, he's a cloud chasing Christian. Yo, yo, cloud chasing ass, and da, 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 and he was a mother clout chasing this wow, da, da, da. Wow. in the same clip where he's apologizing to Lupe so in order to see the clip I had to go and type in on YouTube Joe Budden apologizes too and, and I was typing in Lupe Fiasco after I typed in Joe Budden apologizes it's too it's a lot of them came up wow <laughs> that's crazy so it's just like okay um, I've never apologized or had to apologize for anything that I've said. Because if I bring somebody's name up, I'm willing to speak to them. I'll never talk about somebody without being willing to speak to them. So with that being said, it's like, yo, what is there to apologize for when I'm standing on the word of God? That's my foundation. Wow. And when I'm willing to talk to anybody, not just talk about them. And that hits different when it's like some people, you don't know what their foundation is that, that's making them stand on what they stand on. So all that I'm standing on business, everybody said, it, what kind of business? <laughs> I'm standing on kingdom business. You hear me? <laughs> what kind of business y'all standing on? They got all kind of businesses. They got check cashing business. They got fast food business. They got clothing business. They standing on business, man. Man, I'm standing on kingdom business. You that's hard, too. Kingdom business is the business need to be stood Come on. Come on, man. So, so, so be specific. You hear me? That's so, hard. But yeah. So when you heard, you know, because he had an issue with NBA Youngboy here recently. And what he did? I think, didn't he apologize? <laughs> 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 what? But I think Birdman, a bunch of them spoke out, man. They weren't trying to hear it about NBA Youngboy. You know what I mean? Like, like these, these, these podcasts are going crazy. What do you think about the podcast? I know you had a question. Then. Yes, gonna go, I did. I was going to go all the way in. Yes, I did. I okay. Um, you know, the internet can be very... Ruthful, very rootless, sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, recently I've seen what's been in the news recently is the P. Diddy and... Um, T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes. Ain't show is. Mm. You ain't seen that. This, this just happened way. yesterday and I'm it's trying... It's like two, three days. What's it been it's like been two, two, or three, two or right. three days? I literally text somebody today. I was like, yo, I'm trying to understand what everybody's know. talking about. And like, all what, these like, memes, um, I heard in a TikTok, because that's the first place I heard it, because somebody was doing a review on a TikTok, and it was saying that all those wild parties that um, Puff Daddy was having on all the crazy stuff, T.D. Jakes was there at those parties. 
And that's, that's, that's what I was hearing. And I'm like, I need why would a man, man of God who is, you know, I know he's like, he wanted to be like, okay, evidence. where's the proof of that? Who is mm. the, I because evidence. I know that he'll be in the industry a lot of times with filmmaking and stuff like that. So he right. knows a lot of people and he might be, because if, say example, Puff Daddy is having a uh, party and he said, let's do some, a meeting, meet me at my house. Meet me at my house. The party is there, but we over here in my office talking business. Mm -hmm. And then somebody could see TD Jakes walking out when mm -hmm. the party people coming in. Oh, he was at the party. Yeah. It could go so many different so scenarios. Many but for the main fact, you are there when all the party people come in there. Yep. Oh, you was there. You was yep. over. You know what I mean? Yep. You never know. Dang, that's such a great point, yo. And, yeah. and, and, and the world is so weird nowadays that I just saw a clip of Method Man to where Method Man was making a point, a great example, and talking about how stuff could be taken out of context. Exactly. So he was like, for example, I could say, man, I just saw Kanye, and Kanye was over in the party doing X, Y, and Z. And he was like, they would, they would take that clip and edit out the rest of what I said and just use that. Mm -hmm. And even though that's the whole thing that he said, guess what them people did? They took just okay, that first part of what he it. said. And when this came out, they was like, oh, Method Man said this about Kanye at the Diddy parties. And it's like, no, Method Man was using that as an example of how people could take something out of context. Mm -hmm. Like, that stuff is crazy. And then 50 Cent posted it, just the first part. So now 50 Cent with 20-something million followers posting this. And how many people seeing just that clip of Method Man? Method Man jumped in the comments and just was like, nah, five, like, that ain't that ain't the full clip, you know what I mean? Y'all fell for the remix, like that ain't the full right. clip. So Fifty might end up saying, "Okay, I'm gonna take that post down," or you know, "My bad, Method Man." Maybe something like that happens. But once again, how many people saw that clip the first time mm -hmm. after Fifth posted it and didn't see the apology or Cause, something? Because there's that, a lot of there's that's a why lot it gotta be public. That's right. why the stuff gotta be public. Exactly. If something starts out public, that's one thing I agree with Jim Jones on. Like, like I I heard from his people that. He was like, yo, and I was like, I really respect that brother for saying this, that since this situation has started out publicly, it should also play out publicly mm -hmm. between me and him for people to see two black men constructively right. building, even if they got off to maybe a rocky start, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I so agree with that. Mm -hmm. I really admired that brother for saying that because if it plays out privately, even if it's a positive resolution, all people remember is what they last saw in their mind. Mm -hmm. That's why it was so powerful when Sway back in, I think, 2006 did the interview with Jay-Z and Nas sitting together. You know what I mean? When people saw that, now you can't get that out of your head when you want to say, man, it was just dissing each other. Nas make ether, Jay-Z make takeover. Jay-Z said this about Nas. Nas said this about Jay-Z. But then when you publicly see them sitting down laughing together, dapping each other off, that's powerful right there. Very powerful, mm -hmm. man. You you gotta understand, man, you think about all of the different things that you've seen go on, man. And recently, like I said, when I think about you, um, the thing that keeps spiraling is like, dang, man, Rick Ross is a big voice, bro. Uh, you know what I'm saying? When I seen him come up, and like I said, the first, I thought, I was like, dang, I know on here you talked, you brought him up. You was like, God forgive and I don't, that album. But then you left here and then it's kept, it, it was something else came up. Like, when you heard him say that, being that you, you never met Rick Ross. Correct. But what did you think when you heard him speak like that? Pub well, you, you brought it publicly, right? Yeah. So what did, did you you did you expect that could happen? With or the type of with the type of statement that I made, there wasn't a statement being disrespectful or anything. And what exactly did you say? I literally said the words, "Rick Ross, you can do better, brother. I Dang love you sure. too much to not be honest with you." That's what you said. That's all I said, brother. You could go. You could go look at the sway in the right now. I seen it. I seen it. No, no, that's exactly that's what you said. That's the exact words I said. And you didn't go specifically about what 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 part of my life. What what are you talking about? I, I spoke about how the new music that uh that, that him and Meek had put out. I was like, man, I just listened to the two new singles that came out. Um, and I was like, man, just to hear, like, you're a great rapper. Like, you are a great rapper. Nobody yeah. can take that away from you. And when people hear you with your big voice, you know, speaking about murder in a way that you glorifying it and you putting that out there and you glorifying drug dealing and all this stuff, like, that... That could be that could be uh, part of 
help and pull somebody in the wrong direction in their life, you know? And I was just like, man, like, we could do better, man. No, we could all do better. And I was just giving an example. So that's all I said. So when I saw the way that um, that Rick Ross uh, chose to respond, you know, instantly went to um, uh, insulting me and yeah. calling me basket head, yeah, you yeah, know I'm what I'm saying? That. And calling me a uh, basket head, little man, called me a fake roster, you heard me, trying to in- imitate my New Orleans accent. You know, he didn't do a great job, but you know, <laughs> Uh, yeah, trying to uh, trying to that. imitate my accent, and I was like, "Hmm, well, you just said a lot, bro." But one thing you didn't do was address what I brought up, which was you having the ability to do better when it comes to your lyrical content. You know, I'm not talking about what you're doing in the communities. He brought. Oh, he also brought up they that he up. gives out uh, turkeys yeah. in the community. You know, and I was like, "Okay, you're talking about turkeys," but a lot of people. Um, a lot of people jumped in immediately and was like, that's the same thing Nino Brown did. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. the same thing Nino Brown did. Yeah. You heard me? And 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 Bumpy Johnson. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Bumpy Johnson. On, on American Gangster. Mm-hmm. He gave, with Frank Lucas. Frank Lucas gave out the turkeys and then, uh, uh, but he got it from uh, the guy that he, uh, he, he answered to. Yeah, so. Yeah, so they both gave out turkeys. That's the yeah. thing that, that the gangsters do in the community mm-hmm. to give back during the, during the, I think that's a, and Christmas. A, 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 that's the way the directors are writing it for sure. And these are supposed to be true stories. A lot of them, not the Nino Brown one, but it mimicked the uh, Frank Lucas. Yeah. So that's something that's being done all the time. But I would think that they do more in the communities. I don't know because I don't. I don't know their. their but he wasn't talking about wasn't talking what about he what did. You're doing. What they do no. in the community. He's talking about how you feed your fans soul with this music. There you go. And I totally, you know, I agree with that part of it because um, I spoke on that before and I'm always a person who look at different side of views. You know what I mean? I agree with that. But then when we go back to, I don't know if he believes in God. I don't know if he his foundation is, you know, s- such and such. To say God, he got an album called God Forgives, I Don't. People you got to believe in God. People say... <laughs> People say all the time, I give, you know, glory, but does that mean that you really, you might say God because everybody else says God. Do you really have a relationship with him? It, it's, it's a thing, like, when you think about it, I tell exactly what comes to mind is, is like Romans chapter 10. If you go read them first, 1 through 10 verses where it says they had a zeal for God, but not according to the knowledge. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? The wrong the people had a zeal for God, the Pharisees mm. and the people of the olden time. They loved God, mm. but not according to the knowledge. They didn't have the knowledge. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Mm. So a lot of times people are they mimic what they see. And what I was right? saying about to have a zeal for God, but not according to the knowledge. You you seen this traditionally done to serve God a certain way. Yeah. Sometimes people serve God without the knowledge, without even understanding how they're, they're supposed to serve. But who are we? Let me just say this: we supposed to be examples. Yes. So who are we? So who we? Who are we to not speak up? That's my point. Is who if we supposed to be examples? Who are we to not speak up when we see people that may be straying from the teachings of God, but claiming that they do believe in and follow God? Which you are supposed to speak up. But I'm just saying with him. That's the life he knows, just like the things that he rap about. And yes, you would imagine that, okay, you graduated from that. You're not doing that anymore, so you shouldn't be rapping about what you did in the past. Or if you did rap about it, because I've heard you say you need to, it's like when I watch a movie. Yeah, you have your villain, you have your good guy, but you have a good outcome. You need to show the outcome of where you are and how did it, you graduate from here to here. And not just talk about the negative, but show the graduation in your rap. So you give people that positivity at the end of the, the road to show that, okay, you can now elevate from what you're doing. The, I don't think that's the life but, he knows. Cause but that's what I'm wondering. The life that he knows is that big old house that I keep seeing and the big old cars and exactly. these big old, you see what he knows. That's, that's what been I'm going saying. on so for he's years. he's rapping over, what he knows. Over, over t- we don't know if no, he knows anything no, no, else no. from that. We, he no, know mansions. No. He know money. No. Listen, he know to your Listen to your husband. Listen to your husband. A hot wing, wing, what's wing stops? Wing stops. He's an entrepreneur. 
for. That's what he knows. Don't play because you see it play out in his lifestyle. Everything that he's doing from the car show, all this stuff is public information, right? So you see everything that he really knows. And he knows that he is successful as hell with a big, with a big house. And it, it, it's so huge that did you you I see the drone footage of it, man. When they do them car shows, man, I be like, man, I gotta get down to Rick's. I wanna I wanna take my old school down there. Mm. So you see, like his 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 lifestyle. It's it's displayed for us mm -hmm. over the years. He's won so many different awards and been in so many hip hop awards and influenced so many different people. Gunplay and all these people. You've seen his walk. Now, when he first started, it might have been. Uh, well, you've seen some stuff where they said he was a correctional officer, too. So there's a lot that goes with Rick Ross. Uh, you've seen him battle the, uh, a freeway Ricky Ross about his name. So there's a, you've seen 50 and him get into a big controversy. But do you so see you his, see his life. You see his life playing in front of you. But do you see that in his music, though? No. No. It's different. <laughs> it's different. It ain't. It's. It's like when I with that one song. I, you know, I just interviewed Larry Hoover. You know, Larry Hoover Jr. in Chicago, and that was a song that was so cold. I think I'm big me, huh? Larry Hoover, whip and work. Hallelujah. You <laughs> one nation. <laughs> oh, under God. Under Real is getting money from the can start. That's the lyrics. Come on, man. We go. We we gonna stop playing with God. That's what, so. That's what we. That's what we gonna do. Um, that's why I'm in this game. We gonna stop playing with God. It's one thing to not know, but it's another thing to know and to believe in God and to just be like, yeah, I'm just gonna sit there. And we gonna stop playing with Christianity. We gonna stop that. So that same stuff that Joe Budden saying to me, this Christian this and your Christian this and and you a Christian effing thorn in my side and all that. You wouldn't say that about no Jews. You wouldn't say no Jewish this or Jewish that towards somebody. You wouldn't say that about no Muslims. You wouldn't. We're going to stop playing with Christians like that. That's one thing we're about to do. Well, we're about well, to stop playing with Christians. We're about to stop playing with God. Like, how, do, how, how, do, how do you... How do you get people to stop playing get with them? Get people to stop. That's when you stand on kingdom business. You hear I me? Mean? That's when you stand on it and be like, no, I'm not. So if you're going to keep saying that, I'm going to have a reply for you every time, especially if you're bringing my faith into it and my spirituality into it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have a reply for you every time. Brother, I'm way too successful. I'm too blessed on every level to worry about the worst thing you got is you call me a clout chaser. <laughs> what? Come on, man. We, we had a comedy show right now. Like, come on, bro. Like, let's be for real. But we're going to stop playing with God. We're going to stop playing with Christianity. That's just real. That's but I real. think about, you know, God put us through different things to make us stronger. And when I think, when I hear about, like, I saw one of your interviews and you're talking about when you were younger and how much you were being bullied and stuff like that. It's to me when you're younger and you're being bullied, it and you overcome that. You learn how to make a tougher skin. Mm. Learn to make it run, run off of you. When you're older now, and now you're being bullied again. It's like it don't really like. What's this like? Really? Yeah, it's like it's like that's not gonna work. Right, I'm about to show y'all. You, right, you know how to deal with that. What's the irony? This how God works. What's the irony that I just put out a children's book mm -hmm. called David Found His Slingshot. Mm -hmm. wow. And it is literally an anti-bullying book, right? And this is real life. This is me when I was a little kid in New Orleans. You hear me? That's somebody who went to school with me, who used to be bullying me. This way back in kindergarten. And I figured out by finding my slingshot. Your slingshot is a metaphor for finding your gifts that God has blessed you with, for finding your passion. Yeah. And when you find your slingshot and you use it for the purpose God designed it for, you become victorious, you know what I mean? And I don't want to give the whole book away, but this book ain't about violence. Is it out? Yeah, it's out right now. It's I a, need to get copies for my grandkids. It's out right now. I'm going to give you the website. Yeah, it's yeah, missionvisionlifestyle.com. You have multiple copies on you right now? No, wow. it's the only copy. Yo, yeah, because you know, I was Christmas taking them season. for Christmas. I would have been going to go see them for Christmas. Everybody been getting these things online. Man. Like, everybody. Yeah, that's all right. We're going to so, give them to them anyway. So what's the Can irony? Can I buy that one? Can I buy that one? This is the only one I got. This is like my, this is like the one on the showroom floor that you use to like show. It, so what's the irony that I'm I just wrote an anti-bullying hip hop children's book and what we see going on in the industry right now is a form of people trying to say, well, we're going to try to bully this dude. You know, we're going to wow. try to bully him out of out of putting the, the, 
the the truth out there, you know. So, so you're modern day David, which your name is David. My name is David. And so when they they you didn't even know when your parents wow. named you that you were going to be walking into that purpose, yeah. and it's like you're slaying the giants. Right, and it's not the there. people. It ain't not even the, the people. people. Right, it's the I know spirits exactly. working through the people. Exactly, and to maybe even the corporations. There you go. You know what there I mean. There you go, and I they're have also, no fear. Right, they're also giants as well. Absolutely, they're man. giants. Let me say, man, get this book, man, David. Man, come on, David found his slingshot. For all your kids and grandkids. You guys got to check this out, and that's why, man, I love you, bro. Like you, so authentic, bro. Like mm. that's the whole game for me. Like we came into this thing, and we try to be. We want to be the, you know, keep a fair game going. It's not easy, bro. I, know. I commend you, bro. Like, Thank you don't you. understand, man. Like, I say this really with, like, like, you know, we come in this game trying to, we going to do every positive interview we could, man. We tried our best. We ended up getting into all kind of stuff, bro. <laughs> I'm not playing, but it was a re, but, but, you know, my, God said my grace is sufficient for thee. You mm. know, my strength is perfected in weakness. Mm. So I, what I would go through, it helped us too. Mm. But I'm just saying, man, I commend you for staying the course. Yes. Because a lot of people don't, bro. Mm. Like, a lot of people give up. A lot of people turn back. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, man, thank you, man. And don't stop. Don't ever stop speaking up for God, man. Man, well, why would don't I turn ever back? stop speaking I'm up for up. God, bro. Yeah. Like, like you yeah. got to understand, man, that's powerful to see you step out on faith and say these things and be courageous enough because a lot of people want to say them and they walk in fear. Yeah. Fear yes. is, is what, what holds them back. So hopefully they could look at me and, and, and see an example of like, oh, it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. It's possible to not have fear, to stand on kingdom business, you heard me, and to be dope at what you do. I just put a song out that is, this song is buzzing all over the industry. It's called Lines Drawn. Wow. I put this song out about everything I've been going through with the music industry. And it's me standing up to them saying, I'm just drawing a line in the sand. And I'm saying, what side of the line are you on? Are you on the side where you want to push and advocate for righteousness? Or you want to push and advocate for wickedness? You know what I mean? So um, I'm going to spit it for y'all. I'm going to spit yes. some balls. Yes, please. Yes, right. please. <laughs> so lines drawn. I say, all I hear y'all talking about is your money in large amounts. Must think accountability is your ability to count. It's not. That's why this culture lukewarm. Intoxicated with ignorance. Let me spit the truth for him. I said that glorifying murder in our music was bad. Now people coming at me saying, stop speaking up. We like to hear that. If that's your preference, that's cool. But when you get on the defense, that let me know my spirit irritating your demons. I'm supposed to back down because of some internet hatred. I've been defending feeding Goliath, baby. My first name, David. Man. All year round, we feed people death and destruction, you heard me? But it's okay, because on Thanksgiving, we give them some turkeys. People threaten to hurt me. People say I'm clout chasing. They want the evil unopposed? Huh? That sound like Satan. But I'm responding with love, maturing as I go through this. It ain't just about how I love Jesus. It's about how well I love Judas. Man. They can't silence my voice. I'm going to be vocal forever. These people hating on you, D, they going to be local forever. I got the industry shook. That guilt can't pile up. I drew a line in the sand and it messed their ant pile up. Ain't here to blame it or frame it, but it's all about how you frame it. Now, evil has an excuse, and it's called entertainment. Man. You got a three-part ecosystem. The labels are one. But without creators and consumers, labels can't run. So what the fans support is what the artists gonna make. Got to deprogram and reprogram what we consume and create. I got so much more to say, but I let God lead the way. Trust, I'm going to serve you in doses. Uno about to start coaching you. Three, man. two, one. You hear me? Stop That's playing, good, man. man. Let's go, Stop man. playing, man. I'm going to say this, man. You know, I just really know that you love these brothers. I know that you love the brothers that that may you may say their names, but you love these brothers because we have love in our heart. Mm -hmm. We're not in this game to see nobody lose. No. But we want them to win in the right way. Yeah. Right? Yes. So I know already some people think we know that though you walk in the flesh, we don't we don't war after war the flesh. flesh. We know it's spiritual warfare. Right. The person, as I explained about Legion, it's not the issue. Mm -mm. It's the legion, the many demons yes. that possess the man that is the that is the 
pretty much the one that you have the issue with. Yes. The spirit. So yes. it's a spiritual warfare. And and I'm being real. I know that there's love. When it come down to Rick Ross and him, man, I've watched these guys and I know you've been fans of them no matter what. Yeah. To see their movement, to see their evolution. And that brings up a question too, though. Like, do you, you do understand that certain people on certain levels are dealing with certain devils? Yes. Oh, that's a great, uh, that's a, that's a bar right there. I do understand that. Absolutely. And I think that the main devil, when you get on that type of level, is the devil of feeling like you are a God at that point because of all of your power that's real. and because of all that's of your real. money. And now without even realizing it, you went from worshiping the God to worshiping the green God. Yeah, yeah, and that's the devil that a lot of people got to be aware of because when you are talking about being in love with money, that is directly in opposition to what God tells you. And all we hear people talking about is it's about the bag, it's about getting the bag. That's directly in opposition to what God tells you. He said, "Don't fall in love with the money." You know what I mean? That's right. Just get the money, but that's use right. the money as a tool. That money is a tool, man. That 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 ain't that ain't nothing that got no kind of power over me. We're supposed to be a slave to Jesus Christ. If you a slave to a green piece of paper, man, you'd have fell for the old It's easy to get caught up in thinking that gain is godliness, like I told you last time. Okay? But godliness with contentment is great gain. Mm, yes, yes. Because you think that just because I make this much, Correct. It, it makes me closer to God. Correct. Correct. That was that prosperity gospel that they got caught up in, or you know, years ago too. It's the same thing. You know what I mean? And more so to those guys who are on these big stages, and all these people are staring at them and showing, you know, hollering for them. Mm -hmm. it, it's not easy, bro. I mm -hmm. know it's not easy, but to whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. So these guys are. You have to pray for them. I know. I I pray for everyone, bro. Mm -hmm. So I know you pray for them. I get to sit in the room with them, bro. You, they know you. A lot of people say, why didn't D1 inbox them? <laughs> no, I'm being real. A lot of people said that. Mm -hmm. when, I, when, when I go to my comments, they're like, why he didn't just inbox them? Why would he, why, you know what I'm saying? Why would he just say their name and they got their album coming out? Why he just didn't inbox them? Bro, what are we even, hold on, I'm, I'm trying to show you my service bad up in here. <laughs> you should have got I'm, on the Wi-Fi. I'm trying, oh, y'all got Wi-Fi. Yeah, man. you should have got trying on the Wi-Fi. Look, that's just one example. Wow. Look at that date. And look at what today is. That, that was done before. That's a month ago. Yeah, yeah. That's before all this stuff that's been playing out. You know what I'm saying? So you, you, already, you can see that. Yeah, Come on, man. I like your frame. But yeah. Come on, but man. I, but that's what I'm saying. So yeah. you do reach out. Yeah, yeah. That, that you, part. But but it fall on deaf ears. That that, that part. <laughs> that part. You feel I thought, me? I thought, I, I thought, well, you know, you did ignore me. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> You petty. see how I feel. You know, you reap what you sow. King Petty. <laughs> <laughs> King Petty. King Petty. No. Yeah. No, but I yeah. know you reach out. You know, what was it? It was the one, you, you talked about it last time you was on here, and I just want to uh, put put light back on it, The where you brought these two guys together, the younger guys, of course. Mm -hmm. Who was that again? Was that, uh, was that, uh, was that who was that? Well, Fredo and NBA Fredo Young Boys. And NBA Young oh, I didn't bring them together. They, These young brothers brought themselves together. Okay, I was and, not and, like that. And, and 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 said, "Hey, we we calling you." And know nobody what I'm saying? talked about it. That's what you. That's said. what I'm saying. Nobody wanted to talk about that. These young brothers in their twenties came together. I love and respect that type of move so much. That's hard. That is That's so hard. hard when you see that. So I'm just like, man, if that could happen, who are we to? Like I said. I would love to speak to Rick Ross. I would love to speak to Meek. I would love to speak to Jim Jones. We've already communicated. Great interaction. You know what I'm saying? I would love to speak to Joe Budden. You know? A hater is going to hear me say that and be like, see, that was his plan the whole time. He just trying to, he just trying to do that so he could get next to them dudes. Bro, I am not trying to sign to none of these dudes. I'm not tripping on. We got to do some music together. It ain't about none of that. I'm just saying because of how this stuff has played out, at the end of the day, I'm open to any of that stuff. But if we are not ever getting to the point where we're willing to have difficult conversations, then we cannot solve these difficult problems. Wow, I agree 100%, man. Um, Kodak Black gets back in trouble. Man. And you, I know you had dealings with Kodak. Like... How how big of a letdown was that? Like when you seen that happening to him, and like, uh, have you been able to speak to him? I haven't spoken to him since that that recent stuff. Um, and I really hope that things can 
uh, turn out just in in his favor ultimately to where he can grow closer to God through all of this stuff. I don't even know the facts of what has happened. Once again, y'all be knowing know. the actual factuals of stuff. So I just hope he could grow closer to God through all of this stuff and that I could be of service in any way possible for that young brother. Wow. Um, that's the thing, man. Like, we can't forget about, you know, where it's I was in prison and you didn't visit me. Like, mm -hmm. you know that people, Onesimus went to the prison and he ended up uh, running from a slave master or whatnot. But whatever the case may, him and Paul ran in each other. But it's stuff like that, like that tells me, reassures me that when people do go through these trying times, as people who believe, we have an opportunity at that point to reach out to them and, and just say, hey, man, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, matter of fact, I believe that's a lot. It's a lot easier when you when one's in confinement to get a get a letter to him and be like, "Hey, man, you know I'm here for you." You know, that's absolutely. A, that's the thing that Kodak Black has an anointing on his life. Wow! That if he takes it seriously and if he allows God to work through him, he is going to be one of the most powerful voices of his whole generation for righteousness. Wow! For unadulterated, like uninhibited righteousness. Is Money Moses still in here? Mm -hmm. Money Moses, what's up, man? Come over and speak to D, man. You D1 is in the building. He said he was coming to holler at you. Wow, what up, Money <laughs> Moses? He sleep over there. Oh, he over there sleep? sleep? Yeah, he sleep mm -hmm. over there. He, he probably on there like, surfing, and surfing his phone. I got headphones in. You tripping. Yeah. I mean, the mic is over here, man. What's down, brother? You good? You get the yeah. chairs over around right there. You, man. Like, he, I think he had a few questions before you get out of here. We got we to gotta show love to Money Moses. He'll yeah. stay. He, he going to always be with Boss Talk, there man. There you go. There you so, go. There you go. Do I get him like this, man? Yeah, you got to fix it. There you go. All right. That's easy. Easy enough. Yeah. Um, so, Money Moses, when you when you think about what's been going on since D1 left the show, I know last time... You was you was you on oh, last time I ain't know nothing. Turn it, turn it, turn it. Last time you didn't know nothing. I ain't know nothing. What you, you know, mean? We had the conversation. About, he's like, oh, you ain't listen to my music yet. Oh, and yeah, I, I remember that. Sure, Thanks. sure did. Sure and did. now I love him. Oh, you wouldn't listen and to I still him. Still ain't listen to his music. You wow. did. You, well, no. Why do you love it? Because the message he putting out. It's the mm. same like for my sexy red. Remember that? Yeah, it's yeah. He been a uh, sexy red. He been uh, he's not liking about her. It's not sexy red. It's 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 what they putting out. What they it's a label. They pushing her to make their music. Wow. They want her to make it. Wow. And McMill said it best. He don't know he said it. McMill said the lay he he want to make good music, but the label pay for the music he making. Wow, the hood music. He good. said it. That's some. So how do you get out of something like that? D one when the label is pushing you to make music to influence the people in a negative way to make sales. You got to stand on business. Stand on kingdom mm -hmm. business. Stand on kingdom <laughs> business. You got to make your decision. Am I going to be a slave to the label or am I going to be a servant to God? Mm -hmm. Wow. You got to ask yourself that just because a label is pushing you to do something doesn't mean that you have to do it. You're right. It's that simple. Man, we, we steadily want to talk about these artists and these artists. At what point, I got two things to say, and I got to make sure to say both of these before we end this interview. One is, we put so much emphasis on the artists. At what point do we start trying to reach and teach the fans to where it's like, yo, if y'all truly wanted to see something different, then y'all need to start consuming something different. And these artists, nine out of 10 artists would change. They would change their message if they saw that the fans wanted to mm -hmm. see something different. Cause the artists for the most part are just like, hey, whatever the people want here, that's what I'm going, that's what I'm going to spit about. So at what point do fans be like, dang, we really want to see something different? Or do the fans really not want to see anything different? Yeah, yeah, no, you're 100% you're right. What did you think when you seen uh, all the stuff happened with D1 after he left here. Oh, mm. I loved it. Mm. Why? That's why I loved it. Why? Because it's, it's the way I'm trying to go. Mm. That's Listen, hard. I'm finna tell you this. You instead, I'm finna tell this. I prayed last night before I would sleep and this morning before I woke up. When have I ever did that? Wow. Mm. Like, I don't never used to do that. My brother, that's Someone love. Someone just started telling me to do that. I'm gonna tell you what told me. I ain't gonna say on camera though. Okay. But I just uh, once I had that conversation, like I started doing that every single morning. God moving every single night. Yep. Because I actually see what's going on. Yep. Like if we don't help them grow, then who gonna help them? Because mm. wow. they they want us to fall. That's their plan for us to fall mm. as a community. Mm. And I see it. So now it's like we got we got to stick together. Mm. If we don't we gonna fall? Our unity is very important. Yes. Every every fan need to ask themselves this: What do I stand for? Like what do I want to represent? Because it's easy to finger point at artists and say what this artist is doing right, what this artist ain't doing right. But as a fan, what do you stand for and represent? 
And if all you stand for is somebody that's just trying to get money by any means necessary as a fan, you got to ask yourself, is that why God put me on this earth? Is that mm -hmm. the best use of my life down here is to just be going after the bag? Now, we got to have some deeper, more meaningful principles than just getting money that we stand on. Yeah. And we got to know that those principles are priceless. When you stand on priceless kingdom principles, that makes your life purpose driven. And that purpose is bigger than money. But when you don't know what you stand for, you think your only purpose is money. Mm -hmm. yeah, why? No I can take it away from you. Why do you think, how did you and Sway get to be, have such a relationship? Yo. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like I, I went, when I started researching, I was like, I put in Sway and it, it came up with an all, ever since like a long time ago. Yep. Like, what made you, what, what, what connected the dots for you two? And, now that I think about it, Joe Button was a part of uh, the Eminem, which is the, Slaughterhouse. Yeah. Shade Slaughter, 4, 4, 5. Shade 4, 5. So, so all that kind of, mm. that may be why Bo Button got you in its scope. I don't mm. know. I'm trying, mm. you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to figure mm. out how did you get in its scope. You know mm. what I mean? Wow. But, but anyway, like how did you and Sway get so, you know, you know, yeah. locked in? Well, the first time I did an interview with Sway was in 2014. And I had just done the BET Hip Hop Awards. I was on the Cypher. And I was going through so much spiritually and personally at the time and even professionally man and i was in like a dark depression a lot of people mm. didn't know that man like a lot of people didn't know that i was on the verge of like committing suicide and all kind of wow. stuff and in that first interview i did with sway like i broke down crying you know what i'm saying and i i really was i was fractured as a as a man as a human being and it was something about doing that interview with sway that allowed me to like cross a bridge that I needed to in order to know that like I was bigger than just that that season that I was in you know what I mean I was put I, I had just signed to RCA records I was putting so much pressure on myself to try to win the favor of the label so the label would really start supporting me and rocking with me I did the BET Hip Hop Awards and I didn't feel like I did my best on there and I knew I was like dang almost like feeling like you made it to the Super Bowl and you didn't win you know and I was like, man, here we go. Another L, David. Another, another, another mess up. Another, you could have did better. You know, you could do better type of moment. And I was so hard on myself in that moment. Um, and then it was just on the calendar. Oh, you're going to see Sway today. You're doing a Sway interview. And I did that Sway interview. Matter of fact, I'm lying to you. That was the second interview I did with Sway was that one. The first interview I did with Sway was a year before that. And when I met him, I just felt a level of peace and comfortability with dude. And I also felt like, oh, he is a champion for me in the industry. He's the type of dude that even when I'm not around, he's speaking my name in rooms and speaking good about me. And that's priceless. Very that priceless. is priceless. And I saw that a year ago. So when I did my second interview with him and I was going through so much, I was like, this was God ordained that... I came on this platform today because after that interview, I did a song about it. I got a song called The Sway Interview. Wow. And it literally talks about how at different points of that interview, at the five minute mark, he asked me about this. At the eight minute mark, we talked about this. At the 12 minute mark, I said this. And in the song, I'm naming all these timestamps and I'm talking about how I was feeling internally during the moments and everything. That interview really helped save my life. Wow. And I, at I, that I, time, you were <coughs> believing in God at of that course. time. I was. I definitely was. But I was also fresh off of being a teacher, uh, seeing success in the music industry, signed with a major label with RCA Records, and not really not really having the support of the label at the time and having what I thought was the biggest platform I would ever get in my life, which was being on the BET Hip Hop Awards at the time. So me feeling like, yo, this right here, this night got to change everything. You know what I'm saying? This night, what I do on these awards, when I spit in this cypher, this got to change everything. Putting all that pressure on myself. And what I did, I was in a season at that at that point in life where I would be overthinking things. So instead of doing what God pushed me to do, I'd be sitting there. You know how when I spit for y'all right now, y'all be like, God, dog, that ain't getting goosebumps. Back then, 
I would be overthinking and second guessing everything. Like, I wonder if I say this, if that's going to appeal to this audience, or if I say this, if they're going to like me enough, or, or the streets going to like me enough, or the females going to like me enough. So I would just be overthinking and second and third and fourth guessing everything. Because and God wasn't on the forefront at God that time. God wasn't at the forefront at that, that time. That's the, all I'm hearing, because it goes it back to what we are talking about earlier. Yeah. Have When you have God at the forefront and you're using God to say, I'm doing it for him, yeah. you're not worried about nothing else. Yeah, so... You understand what I mean? There you go. And that that right there, that right there did it. Um mm-hmm. so that was ten that was almost ten years ago. That was like nine years ago. And that literally could have been the end of everything for me. Like I was losing my motivation to rap around that time. I was losing my motivation to live around that time. Right. And I can honestly say that because I shook back from that from that uh from that low that I was at in life. Uh, my life has been way better since then. God put mm. angels in our life at different points in our life mm. to help us through. Mm-hmm. You understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just like how you have a strong belief in him now and you put him on the forefront. You know, you believe then. And what I'm trying to get through is that we all are human beings. We all have downfall mentally, spiritually, whatever, on a daily basis because the devil come at us in different ways, whether through somebody or even through, your, through yourself. Mm-hmm. People don't understand that the devil attack you personally mm. more than they use in mm-hmm. other people because mm-hmm. it attacks you right here mm-hmm. because just like how you said, you were thinking about this, you were overthinking. Da, da, da. It's mm-hmm. not nobody telling you to overthink. Mm-hmm. All this stuff is in your head mm-hmm. and people battle with this the on a daily basis. The battle starts in the mind, man, and that's just, that's the way it goes. Exactly. And, and, and But, what did I want to go back to Sway like in that interview that you made that song about and just during that time period, what did Sway say to you that made that so, you know, such a such a touching and defining moment, you know, in yeah. in, in, in in you in your walk? Yep. I could tell that he wasn't judging me for being vulnerable, you know, and that he saw better for me in the future that for like I could tell that for him it's like brother what you are called to is bigger than just something in the music industry like don't define yourself by this one moment that you may be feeling you didn't do your best you know and all of the stuff that I was thinking I was really looking at myself as a failure at that time you know Mm -hmm. and to have somebody who is believing in you more than you believing in yourself you never forget that person Wow. When you at a point in life where somebody is believing in you more, like in a real way, more than you believing in yourself, you never ever forget that person. Uh, okay. And and I'm going to move a, a, a little bit over like I I brought him up earlier, but when you were like Nas, how did you even get to even know Nas? How did you even meet Nas? Yeah. Like, like I want to meet Nas. Yeah. I'm a big Nas fan. Yeah. And I'm going to be real You're with you. You're not cool enough to meet Nas. That's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> I, mean, you know. I got I, I'm trying, but I can't get nobody else me in the DM like you. Right. And if I can get if I can get that part going, I might can get to meet Nas. Right. But I'm just saying, like, and Bro. I want to say something too. Back to Sway before I forget, man. Sway is one of the guys that he represent the whole hip hop culture. Yeah. He represent the. He helped the. It, when I think about him, the South. He. I don't see him as biased. No way. Like he's yeah. one of the guys that I look at that I can see that he not. He's from New York, right? Mm-hmm. But he don't. No, no, Sway from the Bay. He from Oakland. He from Oakland. That's why. Yeah, there had Oakland. to be a reason. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I would feel to give him New York because right. you know what I'm saying. Right, 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 that right. nigga from <laughs> Oakland. He ugly. He show love because he healed from it. That's it. Yeah. Man, them New York boys hard to get around, but they <laughs> they let us make it. But that's because they the Mecca, man. They the, they started it. But at the end of the day, like, but just to go back, man, like. Nas is a is a is a guy that from New York for sure, yeah. and um, one of the patriarchs, man. Like yeah. like in the culture, the hip hop culture. Like, how was it meeting Nas? And had was that your first time meeting Nas? Uh, oh, that that video I just recently posted. No, that wasn't my first time meeting. It was like my fifth time meeting him. How you know my, Nas? Yeah, man. Look your ball. Yeah, I met Nas. <laughs> I met Nas. Um, I met Nas. 10 years ago for the first time wow. at, at South by Southwest. You ever been there? Yeah, I never been there, but I sent people down there. Mm-hmm. You, okay. I send people. I'm old, so okay. I got in the game old. Okay. So, so I sent Money Moses yeah. and a few other That's people. That's why you got to go to things like that. You I'm think the dude, I ought to go? I'm the dude, no, bro. for you. <laughs> no, no, for it's it's the change, D1. It ain't like no, it, it used to be. Nice okay, well, like 10 it. years ago, that's when I met Nas was at South by Southwest. He was having a sit down, the same way we having a sit down with him and Steve Stout. Okay. So imagine okay. being like 
on the fifth row and you just sitting here watching Nas and Steve Stout build and talk about business and talk about they come up in the game. That's the type of opportunities that that South I was a part Southwest, of yeah. from going That's to hard. South by South. Yeah, a lot of bro. people say that. A lot of people say that. Yeah, bro. So I, I didn't did all that. All the networking stuff, man, going to the conferences, you know, uh, doing what I got to do to network with artists and producers. It's so many people who, as they continue to see me rise and elevate in this game, it's so many people who be like, man, I remember you from handing out your CD outside of the Drake concert in New Orleans in 2009. Man, I remember you from South by Southwest 2012 and you did this show with Snoop Dogg. Man, I remember you from, and it be the most random, man, I remember you from a Mardi Gras parade and you was giving out flyers. You put a flyer on my car and I thought you was trying to break in my car, man. And then did da da da. And I love that because it just shows I ain't taking no shortcuts. Okay, did you, but then to build a relationship with Nas, to keep seeing him, did you, did you build a relationship over the years or is it just y'all just hanging out when you see him? Yeah, I mean, at this point, oh no, we don't, we don't, uh, what you call it, we don't hang out like we don't all the time them, type of or, thing. Or, or you, but correct, you, correct. But when Nas see me and when Nas see, acknowledge yes, you. yes, indeed, and be proud of me. Because and, 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 and he watched your journey. There you go, watched the all, journey. He watched your he journey. He saw from when the dreadlocks wasn't even touching my, my, my <laughs> yeah. neck. To so, now, they almost to my waist. And he see, man, every time I see you, you in a higher position, you know? So. That's big. That's seeing huge. me at Harvard University now. You, you know teaching at Harvard, that's a big. People don't know that. What's the difference between Everybody that fellow? I tell that, they be like, I ain't know that. I tell, I just told Big Tuck that a while ago. I just, you heard of Big Tuck? Yeah, of course. Big Tuck and me was just at the mall. And I was like, Big Tuck, I'm finna, I said, I'm finna interview my boy D1. He said, yeah, man, he hard. I like, and he was like, that's hard, man. He, I said, man, I said, you know, I, I don't know where he coming from. He may be coming from Harvard or somewhere. That's what I told him. Okay. He say, he say Man, he teach at Harvard? I didn't know that. I said, yeah, he teach mm. at Harvard, man. And, and even when I told Aldi, I don't think Aldi. But what's the difference that. between a fellow, because um, I know you're a fellow at Harvard. I'm a, I'm a fellow at Harvard and I'm a professor I know at, that, Tufts at Tufts University. So being a fellow, explain what a fellow is. Is a fellow a teacher there? or is So what is a fellow, fellow is like a combination of being a teacher and being like a grad school uh, student. You mm -hmm. know, that's how I describe it. Because for me, I was on campus teaching in other departments like teaching in the the black history department teaching in the sociology department teaching in the music department teaching in the divinity department da 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 doing all that stuff and also doing research around the role hip hop plays as a teaching tool in the black community right mm -hmm. so I just put my album out it's called From the Hood to Harvard Already. That, was, that was part of my fellowship Already. yeah oh, from, from the hood to Harvard huh is there a lot of black stuff is it a lot of black stuff <laughs> Surprisingly, it's it's it's, it's more than I thought. It's more than I, I promise you. What percent? It's more than I thought. Oh, it's like probably, probably still less than ten. Yeah, yeah. About yeah. To say about just like seven, Brown. Just like Brown. Yeah, yeah. But, but at least that, at least stay there. But that album. Speaking of that album, from the hood to Harvard, I did that album last year as part of my fellowship. I right. just dropped it. I haven't even put it on streaming platforms yet. Eventually, I will. But I put this one out to where my fans can name their own price mm. and go on my website, wow, d1music.com, and get it, right? Wow. D-E-E, -E, the number one, music.com. And I got so much love and support from my fans that when I tell y'all that I have been blown away at how many thousands and thousands and thousands of people are going and getting it directly from me, people paying up to $1,000 for my album. Wow. wow. I'm letting them name their own price. People paying up to $1,000 no. for my album. That's just, just showing love. support. Mm -hmm. Sure, wow. love. Be real, be righteous, be relevant. All three. You heard me? All three of y'all. You heard me? Straight up. And and I want to say this before we, before we, uh, yeah, I do want to say this. With everything that I've been having going on lately, um, the internet can be a very powerful tool for connecting with people or for spreading um, positive messages when, when you choose to use it for that purpose, That's you know? Real. So uh, it's been interesting. There's some people that, because we're all in entertainment, y'all may or may not personally know them, but who, I could tell them behind the scenes, thank you, but I want to publicly acknowledge okay. some people, you know, uh, who I have seen that haven't been afraid to stand next to me publicly amidst everything that's going on. Number one, Waka Flocka. 
Waka Flocka, shout out. There he is up there with big me on that picture. Big shout out to Big Waka. What did he do? And what Waka, did he Waka, 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 flame. Waka. Yeah. Did he say, yeah, what oh did he say? Oh, my gosh. Waka reached out to me. Me and Waka got on FaceTime, start talking and building and realized, like, man, we like long lost brothers. You mm. heard me? Like, straight up. Like, just, we even kind of look alike. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, straight up. And just talking and just him really supporting what I represent and what I stand for. Even with some of the stuff he just put on IG yesterday when he saw the most recent stuff that I had posted about what, uh, what Joe Budden had said. And Waka was like, nah. He was like, Joe Budden, man, you need to just bring D1 on the show and have a talk with him at this point That's for the real. culture. You know what I mean? He was like, because this stuff crazy, like mm -hmm. the way you're talking about him. But I just, I want to say thank you to Waka That's for all. sure. Because like it. it's one thing to support somebody behind the scenes. It's another thing to publicly That's you know, support him. So thank you to Waka. Um, who else? My brother forever for life, Mac. Man, shout, shout, shout out to, Mac, shout man. Out to my I had a chance Mac. to sit down and interview Mac. Yeah, I love Mac. That's man. my brother from another question, forever. Man. You know what I mean? What forever, did, forever. What did he what did he say to your dude during this time that gave you the motivation? Yeah, he he has he's always there to where if I need to talk or if he wants to hit me up and just let me know that you know, he got my back. He's in support of me. Um, he's always just that reassuring voice and presence in my corner. You know what I mean? That's and right. he respects my journey that I'm on. Because I may go about some things differently than how he would go about mm -hmm. them. But he doesn't try to make me change and conform to be who he wants me to be. He just wants to make sure that I'm always moving with the right purpose and the right intentions. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ultimately, even if our delivery styles may be different. You know? I, I love it, bro. So I love that brother. Um, love that brother with a passion. I want to definitely um, say that I have noticed that the city of New Orleans is very divided wow. behind, behind what I represent. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. the city of New Orleans, that's where I'm from, you know. Uh, on one hand, the governor uh, appoint me to, you know, to this council for the success of black men and boys. I'm in all these schools doing this. I'm in the faith community doing this. But when it comes to the streets, it don't matter if it's your city, where you from. It's a very divided consensus because some people just feel like, oh, once again, the big three. Oh, he clout chasing. Uh, oh, he just he just trying to uh, he just trying to make a name for himself, you know, or, or this type of stuff. And I, and I noticed that and I see that and I see some people who who choose to try to um, minimize the significance of what I'm doing and cast it off as just something like that because they want to say they don't like the approach or they want to try to um, just try to make me seem like I'm uh, I'm supposed to be doing stuff the way they want it done. If you don't rep if you don't stand for change, then how am I ever supposed to please you because I'm in the game to change the game. You're not trying to change the game. You love the way things are as is. I am in the game to change the game. So I'm never supposed to be on the same page as you and, and be doing everything in a way that's going to please you. The day I'm pleasing you is the day that I'm no longer on my God-given purpose. You talk about no, no. You talk about division in um, New Orleans. I know okay. Sean Cotton came on here when we were asking, and he I, wasn't lying. And yeah, I saw you it. saw the hardest city to yeah. make it when in. When he talk about why, why haven't there been anybody? Come to come out of New Orleans that blows up big and stuff like that. He said because of the hate. Exactly. Everybody is pulling everybody exactly. down. The division. Even even the level that I'm on, even the level that I've gotten to, my city would either want to not acknowledge it, try to minimize it, or to try to say, well, nah, he only got there because he calling out these people now. Mm -hmm. It's like, bro, how deaf, dumb, and blind can you get? You know but what I'm saying? I gotta stop you. I gotta Speaks say the truth. Lot. My truth is. A lot of times you got you can't look at the, the the naysayers so much because you got people like like when I think of GD when when you think of GDP every time you do something every oh yeah, time somebody right there. he gonna always step up and put it out there it's in the, the way people who but but, but, see, but, GD, but he's speaking for a lot of times he giving the people something to see right right oh a big salute to GD but you see what I'm saying a big salute he I just talked to GD today yeah big but he giving the people he shining the light on this is what we got issue with right. or, or this is what need to be lifted up and then they shoot holes in it I do know that there you, you go know what I mean? there you go so do you you talking about the ones a shoot lot of, holes? A lot of the, yeah yeah I'm yeah. not talking about the, the GDs but the ones, because you gotta have somebody to put it out there yeah. in a way to where see, people could he, see it here's the thing the people that follow GD's platform, when it come to New Orleans at least, is like 
the street streets. You know what I'm okay. saying? That's okay. like the streets. So when you see feedback on 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 the stuff that GD posts, it's a whole bunch of just people that ain't gonna agree with a lot of what I represent. <laughs> just in general, they yeah. they like, oh that he that this lame, this corny, this he this he a cloud chaser. Just off GP. You hear me? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's just something that I know. The thing is. None of y'all ain't gonna make me stop what I'm doing because I don't serve y'all. I serve God. I know that sting. When there's a little bitter rapper, when there's a bitter comedian, when there's a bitter person in the comments, I know that sting, y'all. I don't even flex like that because I don't pride myself on, oh, what I got or, or this, that, or the third. But I know that that part stings. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. At the end of the day, it ain't me doing nothing to y'all that is wrong or that's negative. Or I want all of y'all to win. That's real. But I want us to win according to the word of God. If we got to win according to glorifying a bunch of negativity and our city continuing to be, man, we got people saying, Sean ain't even from my city. You heard me? Yeah. And sitting there talking about, yeah, New Orleans, man, I just could see how hard it is to make it from there. What y'all think that say about us, man? How, how, how bad can it get when we got other people being able to look and say that? Unfortunately, we got a part of our city that prides ourselves on being the murder capital. Prides ourselves on that. We, we hang people up in the rafters and say, yeah, these people is goats from our city. When you actually sit back and you be like, dang, everybody who, who we want to glorify and we want to put on this super high pedestal, what do they represent? That's real. That's what real. do they represent? And you got people that are just want to bait you, you know what I'm saying? In in my city, people that don't want to bait you into something negative. Oh, D1 talking about these people, but he won't talk about Rob49. I love that little brother, you know what I'm saying? I can't wait to sit back and be able to have a convo with, with that brother, you know what I mean? People that came and told me that Rob49 then walked up to them and said, yeah, D1 came to my high school and spoke at my high school. Wow. He said, I was amazed at how that dude could be so positive and be from this city. Wow. Why y'all trying to get me and this that's man to beef? You know wow. what I'm saying? Yeah. People saying, oh, why, why, why do you want to call BG out? I can't wait to talk to BG. I would, I would love did, to have an opportunity did, to be able to speak to BG. I new music. I was going to ask you about BG. Like, is, I mean, what kind of music is he doing? What is, what is he, I mean. This is my message to BG. Brother, I love you. I grew up listening to your music, brother. I can't wait. To have an opportunity to hopefully build with you, talk with you. But if I got to just speak to you through this message, brother, God just brought you through this long bid. I'm so happy that you're home. Man, just let God, let God use you, brother. You super talented. You got a lot of eyes on you. Let God use you, man. Let God use everything you done been through. And he going to take care of you. He going to get you right where you supposed to be. Just let God use you, man. Mm -hmm. I'm here to help in any way I could. And you got a lot of soldiers that's down to help, brother. But let God use you. Don't let this industry or no other artists or any labels or any CEOs try to use you for their agenda. You hear me? Wow. Just let God use you, man. And I love you, dude. I mean that. That's hard, man, because we do love BG. We do love even the Birdman. Remember, I told you you should have went on signing cash money. <laughs> yeah, because I, 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 I was, you. <laughs> <laughs> Because I just know that your heart and your love for God would permeate the room. You know what I mean? Mm. No matter what. You know mm. what I'm saying? You wasn't going to change. You're going to always love God in the midst of whatever you put in. And Birdman, them some good dudes, too. Mm. They just they need a person like you around, somebody who, you know what I mean, mm. influential. But I understood where you were coming from when you say you was a lot younger, too. Mm. And, you know, a lot of opportunity was out there, and I get it. But your light is so powerful. Mm. It can change things. Man, you know what, brother? Last time I was here, I don't think I was in the... I don't think I was in the space uh, emotionally to receive what you said. Yeah. But think about how much I've been through since oh, the last time I've been it. here. <laughs> now, that, now that with everything I've been through and what you saying that, bro, I fully receive everything you're saying. Because I see that I can move mountains, bro. Come on now. With my faith in God Come and with now. my skill set and with my ability to communicate. I see that, bro. That's hard. And I, I see that. And I see that I can lead with love, bro. And so I want to talk to Birdman. I want to talk to BG. I want to build with Rob49. That's right. My city, I want to build with Lil Wayne. I yeah. want to do all of that stuff. I want to, man. And, and at the end of the day, like, if I know that they got people, because it ain't all about me. If I know that they got people that's pouring into them, that's loving on them. That's right. And, and that's, that's coming at them from that type of angle. 
from a righteous foundation, from the word of God, then it's all good. Cool, we got another soldier in God's army that's walking with you, all good. But if they don't, I'm here for that. And, I, and I'm equipped for that, bro. Man, and, I, and I didn't know that last time I, I came down it. here. I could see it. I know how powerful God is. That It didn't even have to do with you as much as it had to do with the power of God and you believing in him. So yeah. I knew he'd take you the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I know that, like I said, I spoke with Birdman and them. Those guys are in a different place than they were when they first started. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. So you got to think about that. People grow. You know, GED, all of these people are... These people are put in place, man, and we good. These are, I feel like good ground, you mm. know, like just the seed just need to be put in the right place. Mm. God will do the rest. Mm -hmm. It ain't nothing you can do no way. God is the one to do everything, bro. Mm -hmm. So he's big enough for the job. God going to use, uh, he going to use BG, watch. That's what I'm saying. He, he going to use That's BG, real. bro. That's I'm, BG. Really, I'm really excited for that. I, I promise you, God going to use BG, man. And I really hope that BG could see this. You know, I, I hope that BG could just know that he got some real ones that's praying for him. That ain't never even met him, but that's praying for him. The, la BG. the last artist I've been like that with, to where I hadn't met them, but I was praying for them before I even met them, was DMX. Wow. That's the last artist that I felt that type of connection to, to where I'm like, man, God got a bigger plan for you, brother. Then you might even realize. Well, yeah, I remember you talking highly about it. that. Go me and BG on the wall before he went to prison in Vegas, right there, and uh. I hopefully when I go in February I can see him again in Vegas like when I seen him that February and then what is that about 2012? Yeah, that was like what it was 12. It had to be about 2011 or 2012. I know he was there. And matter of fact, I seen the lady that was there doing that billionaires uh, that that Boy. clothing line. Okay, it wasn't being a boy club. It was billionaire or something, but it was a clothing line that she represent, and she I think she owned a casino or something. I think I seen her with him yeah. since she since he been out, you know, in Vegas. So mm. like I think I think I think a lot of times he already know what he headed for. He's a lot older too, man. People grow, man. Mm -hmm. You know, they get out, and he knows that that's the again entertainment industry. That's and, what people want. But when you talk and sit down to him, I guarantee you. That conversation gonna be heavy and different yeah. than you would ever imagine. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying. And he with Gucci, man. I met Gucci up in Vegas the same way. They just did a song together. But all those guys been through something. You can see the transition. Now, the one thing I do say though, people don't speak. You don't know their faith. You mm -hmm. don't really know their mm -hmm. faith, bro. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. So I can't expect them to go by what I go by. I gotta walk it as, the, as an example in front of them. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And 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 I go right back to that. You know the fact of knowing that some are babes, mm. some that so you know you remember the babes in chapter three of Corinthians where it says they were babes. They one water, one planet, but God gives the increase. Mm. They was comparing people to people, mm. and that's something that you got to be careful when you do that because it's spirit. It's mm. not the people. I mm. keep saying that. You know what I'm saying? So you got these you got these people, right? That that are just vessels. Mm. And we got to we got to do the right thing by implanting in them spiritually, man, to try to help and walking in love in front of them too. That's you know I'm what I'm at, saying? That's that's, that's that's the whole game. That that's that's where I'm at, man. Um and and it's a fine line because in real time, although they might spiritually be babes, professionally they are bosses. Big, big. That don't. But this so is a babe and a boss. Big, big and, misconception and that's, that's, too. That's scary because professionally you a boss. You got this huge that's platform, right. but spiritually you might be a babe. You hear? And me? you care about God. There you go. And you trying to figure it out, but there you can't. You you, your machismoism not gonna let you try to you know bow down to anything because you got an image to uphold. And the so, only the only people who this is impacting is these impressionable fans. That's real. You got two types of fans. You got the ones that's impressionable and don't know no better and they're being influenced by the music and the messages. But then you got the fans who know the music but they want to continue to consume the poison because they're addicted to the poison. And so the fan the whole time. And that's the ones that's giving me the hard time. Know. <laughs> you a wise dude. So listen, so all these dudes, listen, bro. All these dudes, whether you in it don't matter what part of the world you in. All these dudes is in their forties and in their thirties, and and just call themselves some hip hop fans and 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 all this. And that be the main people who got an issue with anything that I'm saying is because, brother, you have been consuming 
the poison for so long that you are now addicted to it. Mm -hmm. So much so that wow. just because I represent something different and I represent love and light and I'm talented mm. and I'm successful, that irritates you to where you have to cast me off as being a clout chaser or you got to cast me off as just I'm doing something wrong or, or I broke the code by saying somebody's name. I don't follow none of y'all rules. <laughs> I don't follow none of y'all rules. You heard me? Like I don't. I follow the Bible. So y'all rules mean nothing to me. I didn't violate nothing. So wow. these fans who thinking, yeah, this, that, and third, and you got all this energy and negativity built up towards me. Like, man, that's going in one ear and out the other. That's real. You hear me? You the one who need to look at yourself and be like, what is it that I'm pledging such of an allegiance to? You know? Man, that's I deep. ain't the one with the problem. That's D1, man. D1's in the building, man. What'd you say? There's lack of knowledge. Did you have something else that you wanted to add? Because earlier I cut you off on a question. Man, you uh, gotta go listen to my music. You talking about you rock with me and you still ain't heard my music. Boy, I you listen to your music. I listen to the message you be telling other people. That's Facts. what I get from it. I don't Facts. listen to my music, get that? Facts. That's yeah. real. That's real. But I did have a question. It was like, what up? how much slack do you get from the rappers that don't, that don't like the way you're going? Not the fans, the rappers. Man... All right, let me keep it 100. Uh, very little, you know. I mean, we've seen it recently some stuff play out to where a certain artists, you know, who, who I named had different uh, comebacks and responses. But honestly, I heard them too. as far as actual just your everyday rapper, I mean, my brother E put me on to something I was totally unaware of, of somebody LD saying 300. something. Yeah. That's LD 300. Yeah. I, and no disrespect to that brother. That's my, that's my guy, man. Yeah, no like, disrespect to him. I just, I, I never, I never heard of him before and I never, you know, knew, knew who he was. So, uh, I'm a public figure. So you entitled to have an opinion on me, but I don't follow the same code that you follow. You feel me? And when you got my character misconstrued, you heard me? So f just so that brother knows, I come in love, brother. I come in love. I come with respect. LD 300, you heard me? Damn. Straight up. I follow the Bible, man. I follow the word of God. And trying to, what, what, what he said about me? I'm trying to put down established ra uh, successful rappers. Okay. Number one, that's where you're wrong because that's implying that I'm not a successful rapper. <laughs> you feel okay. me? Okay. I'm definitely more than a successful rapper at this point. You might not know that. But I am that, you know what I mean? And then saying I'm trying to what? Put them down to, what, what he said? It, I, I, it was almost like, I think the thing I got out of it more so was the fact that they had albums coming out. Yeah, and, even that. And, it, and, and the fact of even that brother, speaking on them. Bro, you think that I coming. care if somebody got an a, a album coming out? What joy do I get or what do I gain from saying I'm going to try to impact somebody's album sales by speaking on them right before that interview I did with Sway this is just so that my brother knows this because we haven't met at this point but I want him to know I come in love I come in peace but I just want to clarify things I was supposed to do that interview with Sway in August you heard me Sway had a family emergency then after that my grandpa died when we rescheduled yeah I remember my grandpa you remember. died you heard me so the interview got pushed to when it did after it got pushed back twice like that wasn't no pre-made plan that I had in my head of like I'm about to go up there on right before they release this album and say this stuff da 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 no brother no no it's not that you know what I mean yeah so much love and salute to him like I said there's nothing wrong with saying you don't know someone but but just cause you don't know someone doesn't mean that you have to instantly come from a place of disrespecting them I'm not disrespecting LD 300 at all it's all love it's all respect so but for me to be like, oh, that's, I mean, that's all I could hear. And then there are a few bitter people in New Orleans, you know what I'm saying? A few people that's like, there's that's, that's rappers that that's, that's stuck, you know what I'm saying? And that they, they're not happy or, or we might have been here and here at one time. And then, you know, they seen uh, God continue to bless me. And so certain people to say certain things, you know what I mean? Um, just that type of stuff, man. Like that, that's, wow. that's what I see. But for the most part, bro. I'm seeing that a lot of people are thinking right now and a lot of people are like, dang, like they, they thinking, you know, if Jim Jones telling me at this point that he respect what I stand on, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and if we haven't like, if he's seeing my heart behind what I'm saying, and if that's somebody like on that type of level, then all these other people that, that might feel a way or want to say something just, just cause they trying to curry favor with people or just cause they don't understand me. 
cool. You're not going to understand me if you think that I'm playing by the industry's rules. That's right. You're not going to mm-hmm. understand me if you think that I'm playing by the street rules. Mm-hmm. I am playing for God's approval and I am following God's code. That's the G code. And you got God's remember, code. You got to remember, they took it out of school. They took it, they taking it, they taking God out of everywhere. So the kids, either, they don't know nothing about it. That's why they acting like that. Then when you come at them about with what you come at them with, they don't know nothing about it. So when you talk to them about it, it's like a lack of knowledge they don't know about. It. So they gonna come at you wrong because they gonna feel like they don't want to feel like they uh their ego is getting tarnished. Good point. So that's how they look at it. Nah, yeah. good point. Good that's point. real, man. Good Thank point. you for coming on the show, man. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Yeah, all social media platforms is D One Music. D E E the number one music. Uh, my new album From the Hood to Harvard That's out right now On my website D1music.com All my other albums All 10 of my other albums Are on the streaming platforms Just search D1 D-E-E Dash The number one The children's book Man. You heard me uh, The anti-bullying Hip hop children's book David found his slingshot That's at MissionVisionLifestyle.com And um Congratulations man On all yeah. your success man. Thank you Thank you Man thank you so much For coming on Boss Talk 101 We love you D1 for real. I for love real. y'all too, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. This one for the records. What a boss is talk. And we out. <laughs>